So if you've heard of Japanese literature, you've likely heard of the haiku. The haiku is the shortest traditional poetic form in history. There are shorter forms that people have found, but the haiku being three lines of five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables, of 17 syllables overall, it is at the shortest end of what I would think of as durable poetic form. Now, with some people, when they first hear about haiku, think, well, is that it? You know, compared to a sonnet, let alone an epic, what can you do in three lines? Well, let's look at one of the most famous haiku in history. This is from the Edo period uh, in the 1600s during the Tokugawa shogunate. And it's by my favorite haiku poet, and perhaps the greatest haiku poet who ever lived, Matsuo Basho. The poem goes like this. At the ancient pond, look, Mr. Frog jumps into the sound of water. At the ancient pond, look, Mr. Frog jumps into the sound of water. What's going on in this poem? Well, if you look at the Japanese, and I've given you my English translation of it, but if you look at the Japanese, the first line basically says old pond or ancient pond. The second line says frog leaps in. And the third one is water's sound. So when we translate into English and we're trying to match up the syllables, we actually amplify a little bit the content of the poem. But it's just the frog leaping into water's sound. And whenever there's translations of it, you get a little bit of this playing with this almost magical notion of the frog jumping in, not just to the water and creating a sound, but jumping into the sound of water. Now, if you read about haiku history, you'll find that one of the things that Basho is doing in this poem in the 1600s is he's talking about a different sound of a frog than most previous poets. Most previous poets, when they had written about frogs, especially in the Tonka tradition, which we talked about last time, they talk about the croaking of the frogs. Basho chooses to write about the sound of the frog going into the water. And this might not seem very revolutionary to us, but apparently it was a break with tradition. And also, it emphasizes a sound of the frog that may be a little more, I don't know, soothing or active, uh, more positive a sound than the kind of grating, harsh croaking. Probably a whole book could be written about the sound of frogs in poetry from the ancient Greeks up through the medieval Japanese. So what are we looking for when we read a haiku? It's so short. Well, first of all, look for images. What are you seeing? As we learned in the Basho poem, we can also look for sounds. What are we hearing? Also, look for time of year. In fact, in traditional haiku poetry, it was expected that a poet would embed within the poem, either explicitly or implicitly, an acknowledgement of the time of year. So the frog is the indicator of the time of year. There's a season when the frogs are out and very active in Japan, and putting the frog in the poem indicates the year. There's another famous Basho poem, uh, On a Withered Branch, uh, An Old Raven Sits This Autumn Evening. That explicitly says that it's autumn, but also the branch is withered, which gives us an indication that it's not a flourishing time, it's not a springtime. There's a lot more to say about haiku, so we'll be continuing talking about the haiku and look at some lives of interesting and famous haiku poets next.